Hi guys, Eddie here with another video. Today we're going to be discussing quantitative easing, liquidity and falling angels. And if you haven't checked the content uh, that the guys have put out over the last few days, it's fantastic. So go on to the YouTube channel, check that out uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, as a result of the coronavirus, of course, we've seen huge supply chain disruptions, uh, huge demand shocks uh, to equity markets, companies, uh, oil, uh, everything. And it's led to so many unprecedented things taking place. Uh, global central banks have stepped in uh, to pump artificial liquidity and support markets. Okay, so the Federal Reserve balance sheet has exceeded six trillion to backstop this coronavirus crisis. It has tapered off uh, their ta treasury purchases um, somewhat, um, but this is still going at an incredible pace. They're purchasing things like US treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, investment-grade bonds, uh, and more importantly, junk bonds. So this is the lowest rated debt um, that a company can issue. So they've expanded their purchases for this lower quality debt. Uh, and this is as a result uh, of basically companies tapping the debt markets uh, for liquidity to basically offset their revenue shocks, their cash flow shocks, so they survive. Okay, And as a result of this, companies have actually been uh, issuing their debt at a record pace uh, to offset this. Uh, and the Fed have basically taken the other side. So they're going to buy the debt that these companies are selling. And this is forecasted uh, the Fed balance sheet to hit $9 trillion, uh, by mid-year 2020. And this is the call coming from Evercore. Um, they actually got to a point where they're purchasing 1 million of assets per a second okay so this is extreme conditions uh, leading to an extreme emergency response uh, from the Federal Reserve and this is basically to ensure that the credit markets uh, the high yield markets are functioning uh, and they're liquid okay um, so all central banks are doing this uh, the European Central Bank the Bank of Japan the Federal Reserve um, they're all pumping artificial liquidity uh, to these companies, to these markets, uh, and we're seeing serious moral hazard uh, on our hands as these companies are racing for liquidity because they know these central banks are going to buy up their debt. Um, these are, this is potentially keeping firms that should fail, zombie companies in business, uh, and this is rewarding excessive uh, risk-taking and undermining capital, uh, capitalism itself. Uh, so it's extremely worrying that we're seeing this, but it's necessary at the moment. Um, first of all, we have to understand liquidity, okay? And this is uh, basically a slide showing uh, the bids, so the buyers in the market and the offers, okay? Um, so this is showing a very liquid market, okay? And this is something like the US Treasury market uh, or the FX market. In times of extreme stress uh, and shock, what we see is actually less buyers and sellers uh, in the market. Uh, and this is actually what we saw a few weeks ago in the US Treasury market. And this is extremely worrying and led to the emergency responses from the Federal Reserve. Um, basically, when they're stressing something like the US Treasury market, this is extremely worrying because lots of other assets and derivatives are priced off this 10-year uh, yield. Um, so if there is stress in this market, this um, can cause huge problems for the, the global economy. Okay, uh, If there's less buyers and sellers, when someone places a trade or buys or sells a normal amount of this asset, this could exacerbate price movements. And this is basically what we saw with oil over the last few days, where uh, speculators were holding these oil futures contracts, uh, the May ones, and they were basically dumping them because they didn't want to take this um, basically delivery of physical oil. So there was no one willing to buy this uh, futures contract. They were trying to sell. So the price went below zero, which is crazy. Um, so these bid offer spreads tend to rise uh, in volatile mar markets um, because banks and other basically intermediaries are reluctant uh, to hold this inventory. Uh, and the cost of training, despite the Federal Reserve and other global central banks uh, stepping in, is still about three times the average um, in investment grade credit um, that we saw before the coronavirus um, and this has been exacerbated again by the move of some broker dealers staying at home uh, because of the virus lockdown. Uh, and this is reducing their ability uh, to transact. So what we saw out of uh, the Eurozone today uh, is extremely poor uh, PMI. So this is the Purchasing Managers Index. Um, so this is just another poor piece of data coming out of Europe. And this has led uh, to the European Central Bank uh, basically uh, speculating that they're going to take extreme measures. So the Euro Europe, just like the whole global economy, uh, is in ex 
it's intense contraction, uh, economic activity is plummeting, uh, and actually markets uh, have diverged quite considerably um, from actually the economy. Uh, and this is something I was watching, the Federal Reserve balance sheet that we referred to on the uh, other slide. Over the last 10 years, um, the Federal Reserve balance sheet and the equity markets have basically gone in lockstep and gone up together. Okay, what we saw in March was the equity market sell off and that correlation break down quite dramatically. Since then, the equity market and the Fed's balance sheet as a result of this artificial liquidity have both gone up again and that correlation has returned. Okay? So now the ECB uh, have actually stepped in to loosen their collateral roles to accept something called falling angels. So what are falling angels? Falling angels are essentially uh, companies that are rated in the investment grade space. So you have this whole spectrum of credit ratings uh, by lots of different rating agencies. So S&P, my old company, Moody's, Fitch, uh, and they rate companies according to the credit worthiness. How, how basically able are they and how willing are they to repay their debt? Um, so when you see extreme stress, so revenues, cash flows drop off. This puts uh, companies, obviously, uh, in severe um, credit crises, right? Um, so they will be downgraded by the credit rating agencies from this investment grade uh, to the speculative grade, high yield, junk space. The markets have been downgrading these companies far faster than the credit rating agencies, uh, and there's going to be a lot more to come. So UBS have come out of a great stat. Since 2011, European bonds rated triple B minus one notch above junk status has ballooned from 330 billion to 1.14 trillion. Yet double B rated bond issuance in the high yield market has risen from 74 billion uh, to 185 billion uh, in that time. About 275 billion of non-financial corporate bonds could become falling angels and downgraded within the next year. Um, so this is extremely worrying, um, and this is a result of the coronavirus affecting businesses' activities so much. Much. The economy is shrinking considerably, uh, and actually, as a result of that downgrade, investment com companies, investment funds are no longer, some of them, allowed to hold this uh, debt. So they would invest in companies that are only allowed to be investment grade. Now, when they're uh, basically downgraded to junk, they won't be allowed to hold these uh, assets anymore. So this is going to exacerbate the moves uh, further. So the ECB has changed these rules and loosened them um, to basically accept these fallen angels. Okay, So this is not yet uh, as far as the Federal Reserve have gone, where they are actually buying uh, the junk bonds. These are being taken as collateral. Uh, and the central bank said it was prepared to go further if it's required uh, to avert a eurozone debt crisis. So this is extremely, extremely worrying. We're in unprecedented times where this coronavirus situation uh, is impacting markets extremely considerably, um, and then we're going to see a huge amount of falling angels. Um, this poses huge uh, threats for all central banks across the world um, because they're meant to purchase assets that actually do not lose money. Um, so we're all watching the situation as it develops, um, but it's going to be extremely interesting uh, to see. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any concepts that you didn't understand, please write in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Any video requests, I'm more than happy also uh, to do so. Take care.